Since Fallout New Vegas first released on October 19th, 2010, the story has been perhaps the chief reason people will give you when asked why they love the game. Despite all of the bugs stemming from the mere 18-month development period and Obsidian working with a new and unfamiliar game engine, for many folks, none of it was quite enough to tarnish the story. But what do we even mean when we say that we liked the story? As far as descriptions go, it's as vague as it is broad. Well, I can't speak for everyone, but I would like to take a look at one specific reason why I love Fallout New Vegas. At about halfway through the main story, after leaving the Securitron Vault beneath Fortification Hill, you'll be given an opportunity to talk to a very important character that you've likely already heard much about. The figurehead of Caesar's Legion, Caesar himself. If you've built up his trust, even if you do plan to deceive him shortly hereafter, Caesar is willing to spill the beans on almost everything right here. Between the dialogue right here and a little bit that's sprinkled throughout the Honest Hearts DLC, you learn about the horrific practices he used to create the Legion. His perspective of losing the first battle of Hoover Dam, and why he has the Legion favor melee weapons. It's all pretty interesting stuff, but I think my favorite part of Caesar's admittedly lengthy dialogue is his reason for creating the Legion in the first place and going to war with the NCR. So we come to learn that Caesar, back when he was still called Edward Sallow, was a bit of a book nerd operating with the followers of the Apocalypse. Although he was still a young man at the time, Edward Sallow was already disillusioned with the NCR's way of life and their notion of democracy. He cites Tandy as being an effective leader, but still, he hates that she was elected as president for 52 years in a row. She was popular, and others didn't want to oppose that popularity. But as I said, he still does give her some credit. Her presidency was one of the few things that was working for post-apocalyptic America. But after President Tandy... The NCR came to arrive at the state we know it in today, in New Vegas at least, soiled by individuals in places of power acting through greed, putting their personal interests above others more in need. Certainly, there are still many good people in the NCR. New Vegas has a lot of fun with moral ambiguity on the faction level, but nonetheless, there was enough of the bad for Caesar to take notice. And there's even plenty for the Courier to take notice. Throughout the game, we run into many instances of folks being taken advantage of or just outright ignored by the NCR's bureaucracy and corruption. An instance that I think most players will probably remember running into is Dr. Thomas Hildern in the OSI. Just as a bit of a self-indulgent aside here, I'm always surprised by how often this guy is quoted as being some kind of intellectual when it couldn't seem further from the truth. Too many people have opinions on things they know nothing about. And the more ignorant they are, the more opinions they have. When you do the quests involving him, you come to find out that he regularly takes credit for the work of his much brighter subordinates... He sends unwitting people to Vault 22, knowing full well the high risks involved, and of course he's willing to expose the Mojave's NCR soldiers to the clearly dangerous data obtained from Vault 22. Hildern is just completely full of himself. Anyway, going back, like I said, the NCR has some problems. Caesar saw these problems as stemming from old-world ideas, like their notion of democracy. He thinks that the NCR is doomed to repeat the mistakes of the past, and couldn't possibly survive in post-apocalyptic America. So, he tells you his plan, his legion's goal. 
It's long-term stability at all costs, and those costs are pretty high. It is here that Caesar reveals the thinking, the philosophy, behind his entire war with the NCR. Hegelian Dialectics. Now, I spent some time digging around for a proper and easy-to-understand explanation of all that Hegelian Dialectics is about, and I found that the majority of folks aren't wholly sure themselves. It's ultimately pretty complicated. So... I think that, for our purposes, the very best explanation that we can use is the explanation from Caesar himself, because it includes the context from him and the game's world. How do I put this basically enough? It's a philosophical theory, the kind you might encounter if you took time to read some books. The fundamental premise is to envision history as a sequence of dialectical conflicts, each dialectic begins with a proposition, a thesis, which inherently contains or creates its opposite, an antithesis. Thesis and antithesis. The conflict is inevitable, but the resolution of the conflict yields something new, a synthesis, eliminating the flaws in each, leaving behind common elements and ideas. And it is these common elements and ideas that Caesar believes will ensure that humanity will continue to exist and survive in this new world. Although Caesar does bear animosity toward the NCR, as we find out and learn, it isn't his reason for going to war. He believes the NCR going to war with a great power is an inevitability, and that said great power should be him and his legion. Caesar's read on Hegelian dialectics describes that the result of thesis and antithesis butting heads will annihilate both forces and create something new, something better. Caesar believes that conflict with the NCR would elevate his legion. In his words, the new legion would have the military might to protect both citizens and its dictator. The new legion would be humanity's way forward, the path of survival. Now, within the context of the game's world, we need look no further than his numerous crimes against humanity to see that, even for all the faults of most other factions, Caesar and his legion rank among the most monstrous but like many good, convincing villains, he sees himself as a hero. Caesar has gone so far up his own butt in the pursuit of survival and his own brand of pseudo-intellectualism that he's willing to dismiss perpetuating absolutely horrific deeds just as long as it furthers his goals. Survival at all costs, right? Now, of course, this isn't to say that a Legion role-playing character doesn't have merit or that there isn't fun to be had within the context of playing a game. However, all that said, I do think that there is something else that Caesar is sorely mistaken about. It's a small detail, but I think everyone would agree that it's an important one, regardless of whatever faction you align with, even if that faction is Caesar's Legion. It's this one detail that I absolutely love, and it all comes back to Hegelian dialectics. This idea that two great and opposite forces will meet and create something new. The idea that the fires of war between the new California Republic and Caesar's Legion would forge something incredible, something amazing, something that would have the ability to change the Mojave Wasteland forever. Caesar was right about the war, about it creating something new. But he was mistaken in assuming that this new and awesome power would be born atop Hoover Dam in a hail of gunfire. Instead, it would be born from a single bullet in a small town and a shallow grave.
I hope that you've enjoyed this video that celebrates the game by taking a look at just one reason why I personally love New Vegas. And although I do love it here, I feel it's important to state that not all games or stories in general need to have any concern for concepts of philosophy. There's plenty of good stuff out there that does well without it. And there's certainly times when it can backfire and come off as just plain old pretentious. I just like the way New Vegas did it. Now, if all goes well, this should be just one part of six about why I love New Vegas. I hope you'll check out the others as well. I did an enormous playthrough of New Vegas on Very Hard. If you're into that sort of thing, take a look at that as well. Nevertheless, thank you very much for taking a look at this video. Please, take care of each other.